Hey, everybody. Hello, hello. Happy Tuesday, my friends. Hello to all of you in YouTube land. Facebook will be making their way in here soon. Hi, everybody. Hi, Jesse. Hi, Colleen. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Hi, Miss Shayla. Hi, Cynthia. Hello, hello. How is everybody doing? Did you guys have a good weekend? <laughs> Oh, I hope that you did. My weekend was just not quite long enough. Sometimes I'm ready to get back to work. Today, I'm not. And I know it's not Monday. I know that it's Tuesday. But listen, my brain still says that it's Sunday. <laughs> I am I'm just not. Jennifer says, what? Colleen is there? She <laughs> is. She is here. Hi, Nicole. So Colleen was here packing orders and uh, ran out of bubble mailers. There were so many orders, we ran out of packing materials. So yeah, she's been here working all morning while I've been being lazy. Not really, but I mean, yes, really, she has been here working all morning. <laughs> oh, all right. So let's, let's chat, shall we? Let's chat. So if you guys remember, not too long ago, I did a necklace using the Sam Speedbox from May. And I'm trying to see, what did, I, what did I even do with it? It was right, okay, I have it. Oh my God. Are you okay? I am. What just happened? My ears are ringing. Whoa. So I just dropped this whole little plate situation. I'm sorry. And all of those beads that were in that little bowl just went flying. I have a lap full of beads. Was it my fault? No, it wasn't your fault. It was my fault for pulling on that and not paying attention. I had bead soup, you guys. And now I have bead soup in my lap and in the floor. Oh my, okay, hold on. <laughs> well, that was, that was interesting. Okay, I'll get the rest of those up at the end of the show. <laughs> wow, okay. So, like I was saying, <laughs> I did a necklace that I pulled off the shelf and then pulled everything down with it. Um, With the maybe box, and I was just gonna give you a quick little a little reminder of what it looked like if you guys remember this guy right so this was the first necklace that i did with sam's maybe box and <clears throat> it is absolutely gorgeous but it didn't show off i mean there's no but to it because it's an absolutely beautiful necklace but I wanted to show off some more of the color because the bead boxes, Sam's bead boxes are really good about having, like there's usually, not usually, there is always a, a, a theme, right? And the color palette works to cover that entire, um, that entire theme. However, you can always kind of break it down into these like smaller color palettes. And this was a really cool one because we had like lots of golds and creams to work with. But then on the color side, there was like purples and turquoises and blues and like greens and lots of other color, right? This is the bag. <laughs> lots of other color and it didn't get included in that first necklace. And so I thought it would be cool to get together and do another necklace in the kind of, in the other color palette that was available under the same box. Because it's a really cool way to show off the versatility of the box. Because you can get two totally different styles or several different styles out of the same bead box. Um, and it really just kind of shows you all of the possibilities there. So we're going to put together a necklace today using a lot of the purple that was included. And that's still going to leave you guys all of these beautiful like teal greens and blues. Um, there's literally like three or four color palettes in one in one bead box. So I uh, definitely wanted to kind of draw attention to that. If you guys are not uh, signed up for Sam's Bead Box, you definitely want to check that out because it is such a cool box to get. It's like 
somebody does all the shopping for you and you just get it as a present. That's the way I always look at it. <laughs> I always look at it that way. And you can use my coupon code, um, Sarah, for $5 off your first box if you are not subscribed. That being said, if you are subscribed, you don't have to resubscribe every month. Like you're already ready. <laughs> just, just letting you know. Once you're in, you're good to go. So you don't have to worry about it. You just know that once a month it's going to be coming. You're going to get a, a box of beady wonderfulness uh, to your mailbox. And I got to tell you guys something. I'm not going to, I'm not giving anything away. Nothing away <laughs> at all. But the July box might be my new favorite Sam Speed box. My heart. My, I, I can't, I can't wait. I can't wait for y'all to see it. Can't wait. I'm so excited. But we've got the May, wait, not the June, June, July. I don't even, where are we? I'm talking about the June box. The June box might be my favorite, not the July box. I'm sorry. I don't even know what day it is right now. <sighs> it's June. <laughs> Colleen and I were working on the calendar and now I've got, I have, I have everything all messed up. Okay. So we are still working with the May box. I'm talking about the June box being amazing. The May box is also amazing. We're going to work with it to make a purple necklace and we're going to do some infinity links. We have not, um, we've not done infinity links in a while. So for those of you who might be new here to the community, uh, this is a cool little link that you can do very, very easily. And you can use this in so many different ways in your jewelry designs. So let's get to it, shall we? I'm going to turn you guys around. All right. So like I mentioned, I pulled out quite a bit of the purple from this amazing box. So I have pulled out the drop. This is going to be our focal. How gorgeous is this? I've got a lot of the fire polish in that purple to make the length of our necklace. And some of it's already ready. Okay. And we're going to do some little drops. You guys, I've been doing these little clusters a lot lately. We're going to do a little bit of those. I'm using some of these gorgeous flowers that were my favorite thing in the box. And we're going to be putting together some of these little infinity links. Let me see if I can grab one with my pliers and hold it up for you to see. So the infinity links are these guys. And I'm incorporating these as drops. They make great earrings. You can make a whole chain out of these. They're really, really easy to do. And there's so many different things you can do with them. So we're going to do some of these guys. I haven't done any of these in, in a while. I'm going to be using my stepped bell making pliers for this. But listen, if you don't have the stepped bell making pliers, you can use a combination of your large and small bell making pliers, or you can just find something around your office or your space uh, that you can use, right? You can use a permanent marker. Uh, let's see, do I have one on hand here? Let's see. So for your larger loop, these might be a little bit bigger, but for your larger loop, you can use, um, you know, a marker like this for your small one. You could just use your round nose pliers if you wanted to. Um, so you've got options. Okay. All right. So let's get this necklace put together. We're going to do some wire wrapping and I'm only using three head pins. The rest of this is pre-cut wire. Um, I'm using a lot of 22 gauge wire for this, but if you would like to use 20, you can. As far as the infinity links are concerned, I'm using 18 gauge wire in the gold color. Um, the 18 gauge is, is not the only gauge that you can do these with. You can do these with 20 gauge, but you do need to work hard on them a lot. Okay. So just know if you don't have 18 gauge wire and 20 is all you've got, that's fine but you definitely want to put these on the block and work hard on them as much as possible because they will not retain their shape as you're wearing it if you don't. Okay, so let's do the infinity links first and then we're going to put this all together as a necklace. So these are super, super easy to do. Let me move this out of the way. So basically what you're doing is you're just creating two uh, shapes that are exactly the same. You're making kind of a figure eight or like a little snowman shape right? You're doing a large loop and a small loop. It makes an S. And then you're basically just flipping them over, one going one way and one going the other way, and you're linking those together with a jump ring. So it's super, super easy to do, but again, can be used in so many different ways. So that's what makes these super cool. 
All right, so I've got a couple pieces of my 18 gauge wire that are pre-cut here. I do wanna make sure that I've got a flush cut on the end of my wire. That's pretty important if you want these to look nice and clean. So be sure that you get a nice flat cut on those, okay? All right, now I'm gonna use my step to bell making pliers here and you can use any combination that you want to, but I am gonna use the smallest and the largest. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab the wire and listen, it only takes like two inches of this to make this. I always have more wire cut than I need just because it's a little bit easier to handle, but you you honestly do not need more than about like two and a half to three inches of wire to make these. Okay, so I'm using the smallest mandrel of the step tool making pliers to make my first loop, which is basically just our little P shape, right? And you can see how having that flush cut on the wire makes a big difference as to how that wire comes together, right? It looks very, very clean. Okay, now I'm going to turn this the other direction and I'm going to place this with the loop right up against the tool. There's no extra room there, okay? And I'm going to take the wire in the opposite direction around the largest mandrel on the tool. Take that off just like so. Okay. And then I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what this looks like if we use different sizes too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to come in with your cutter tool and you're going to trim off and you want to trim off right where these two wires meet each other so that it's going to look as seamless as possible, even though it is cut, right? But you can see how close, okay? So there's that. Now, if we do the same thing with the next size up, you're going to see you're going to get a little bit different look. It's a little bit more balanced, but honestly, depending on what you're going for is you know, you're, you've got a lot of different combinations you can do here. The most important thing is that you've got two that are the same. So I'm using the next step up. So the next la largest from the, from the tiny one. And then I'm still using the largest Okay. And then I'm going to cut Oops. Okay, so you can see they're a little bit different. This one was not as clean. Okay, now if you're going to use your small and large bell making pliers, you're going to get an even different. It's going to look even different. Okay, so now I'm going to use the small again. I'm going to move my phone because it is buzzing all over the place. <laughs> Just shaking the whole desk. Okay, using the small mandrel here. Okay. And then I'm going to use the large mandrel of the large bell making pliers. So I'm just basically treating it exactly the same way. You do want to be sure that your loop is always right up against the tool, regardless of what you're using. And you may have to, you know, rotate the pliers just a little bit in your hands. Okay. And trim. And again, you want to trim as close as you can. That one was a little bit far, a little bit too far, but I can, I can wiggle it back. Okay. So you're going to get a couple of different looks. They're all very, very similar, but you can see the size difference. <clears throat> the one with the combination of your small and large bell making pliers is the smallest. Um, and then of course the smallest mandrel and the largest mandrel of the stepped bell making pliers is, is your medium. And then stepping up just gives you a, a bigger, small loop, right?
So it's really kind of up to you. But again, if you've got the stepped bell making pliers, you literally can do this in, in any combination. It's completely up to you. My personal favorite is the one where I use both the small and the large bell making pliers instead of the stepped. Um, but that's it's just personal preference, right? Just personal preference. Okay, so I'm going to set these to the side. We're going to do one more so that we can link these two together. And I'm going to use the small and the large bell making pliers here. All right, and I'm going to use a very, very small piece of wire. Again, just trimming that end to make sure that we've got a nice flush cut. I'm going to use the smallest mandrel on the small bell making pliers for my loop. Oh, thank you, Peggy. So there's our small loop. Again, you can see where that flush cut makes a nice, a nice uh, connection. Okay. And then I'm just going to put that into my large bell making pliers. Again, no space between the loop and the tool. You want that literally sitting up against the edge of the tool. Okay. And then I'm just going to use the rest of the wire to go around the large bell or their large mandrel. And I can only go so far before I need to kind of readjust a little bit so that I can go ahead and take my wire on over. Okay, so I'm gonna take it off and then I'm gonna cut again, cutting so that I've got a flush cut. You wanna cut as close to where those wires come together as you possibly can. Okay, and if it is a little far apart, you can always come back in with your pliers and kind of push it over so that you can get it as close as possible. Okay. All right. Now I know that I said that you, um, if you're using 20 gauge wire, you want to put this on the block and work hard in it. If you're using 18 gauge wire, you, you don't have to, but just for a little extra security, I am going to work hard in mine just a tiny bit before I connect them together. So I'm going to put mine on the steel block. I'm going to use my nylon hammer. You can use your rawhide mallet, uh, rubber mallet, whatever you like to use to work hard in, okay? Doesn't make any difference. And I'm going to do both sides. And then I'm going to do the other one. Okay. So now all we're going to do is we're just going to link these together with some jump rings. Okay. So I'm going to take a jump ring and it doesn't even matter what size jump ring. Totally up to you. And I'm going to hook the large side of one into my jump ring and the small side of the other one into the same jump ring. Close that back. And then on the opposite end, open. And then same thing, the small end and the large end and close that back. And now when they lay on top of each other, you've got this really cool little infinity link. So again, you can use these as drops for, you know, your focals in necklaces, sort of like what we're going to do. You can use them for earrings drops. You can make entire chains out of these. So if you want to make your own chain, put some beads in between them if you want to, or don't, right? I mean, it looks cool just like it is. Linking a bunch of these together to make a really pretty bracelet would be awesome. So they're super easy, but really versatile. You can use these in a lot of different applications in your jewelry making. So... We're going to use ours as some drops. Now I remember why I had the phone over here in the first place, because I was looking at the picture. <laughs> All right. So we are going to put together, speaking of chains, we're going to bead up our, our little chain here. And we're creating these little links out of 22 gauge wire and five of the fire polish rounds. Okay, and we're just linking those together with a little four millimeter jump ring. And <clears throat> the rest of the length of my necklace is actually going to be um, some chain, but we're going to do five of these on each side. Now, I've already got four for this side and four for this side, but we're going to do two more of these little links. I'm going to pre-cut, or not pre-cut, I'm going to use cut 22 gauge wire for this, but you can use eye pins if you want to. You don't have to, you don't have to do your own. 
but let's do that. So it takes about three inches. That's probably a little bit more than what you actually need. 22 gauge wire is my go-to. You can use 20 if you want to. But we're going to come down on the wire. And we're going to give the wire a bend. Okay. And then we're going to come in with our round nose pliers. Looks like everybody's having lots of Facebook issues today. All right. We're going up and over. Rotate. Take the wire over to the other side. And then we're going to wire wrap. So we're making our own eye pin just with a wrapped loop. Okay. So there is our wrapped loop, trim off the excess. And then I'm going to thread on five of the fire polish. Okay. And then I'm just going to do a wrap loop on the other end. So these are super simple to make. You don't even, you don't have to do five beads. You can make them smaller if you want to. Or bigger. Totally up to you. Okay. We're going to do another wrap loop. Over here, up and over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side. And then we're going to wire wrap in that space. You're going to come in with your cutter tool and trim off. All right, we're going to do one more of these. So I'm going to set this one to the side. Do one more together. Okay. Chain those pliers, bend in the wire. Coming in with our round nose pliers up and over. Rotate, take the wire over to the other side. Okay. And we're going to trim off the excess. And then five more of our fire polish. And another wrapped loop. Okay. All right, come in with your cutter, trim off the excess. All right, so you're gonna make 10 of these, okay? And you're gonna link those together with some little four millimeter jump rings. So you can use sixes if you want to, totally up to you. I like to use the fours though, because they don't really take away from the overall design. Where's my other four millimeter jump ring? I feel like I'm loose. I've lost one. What happened? There it is. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm just going to take these. Again, going to open jump ring between two pairs of pliers. And attach. Close that back. open. All right. So you've got a total of 10 of these, right? So that means that the middle is going to be right here. And I kind of put this together backwards. I mean, because normally I would do the chain part last, but since so much of this was already done for us, I figured it was fine to just go ahead and finish you know, finish the beaded chain part. Now we're going to work on the focals here in the front and the focals in the front in the front are going to be using those infinity links. And <clears throat> we're going to put one in the middle and then one on either side in those little jump rings on either side here. Okay. And we're going to create some little drops with our infinity links. So the one that we already created I'm going to put that one here in the middle. Now I'm not attaching it just yet. I'm just showing you. So I'm going to put that one right there. And then off of that, I'm going to use our beautiful drop. And 
one of those gorgeous flowers. And let's pop a little fire polish bead right on the top of that. Okay, so that's going to be our center. So we're going to put that together with a little bit of wire. So you're going to need to cut yourself another little piece of 22 gauge wire. And you really only need about three inches for that. All right now, our bead here, our, our drop is drilled through the front. So we're going to treat this like a briolette. We're going to cut our wire. I'm going to thread that on. And I'm not going to drop it to the middle, though. I'm going to kind of keep it about an inch and a half from the edge. Okay. I'm going to take the two wires, one of them bend it upwards, following that natural curve of the, of the bead. Flip that over in your hand. You're going to do the same thing with the other, following that natural curve of the bead. Now your two wires are crisscrossing over the top of the bead. Okay. You're going to take the longer wire, bend it straight up and down. And then you're going to take your shorter wire and bend it out this way. So you've got an L. Okay. Now you're going to take your short wire and wrap around that straight wire about two or three times. And you can hold on to all of that with your chain nose pliers if you want to. Okay. Just kind of tidy those wraps up a little bit. I'm going to come in with my cutter, trim off. All right, and now I'm going to drop down one of these gorgeous flowers. <clears throat> and then I'm going to put another fire polish right on the top of that. And I'm going to do a wrapped loop. Okay, so I'm going to grab the wire right where it is exiting the bead, bend the wire over the top of the pliers, coming in with the round nose pliers going up and over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side, and then wire wrap. Kind of tidy everything up, make sure everything's nice and straight. And then trim off. All right, now <clears throat> our little infinity link that we have put together here. I'm gonna open up. Well, I need to tidy up my wire just a little bit. So make sure everything's going all in the right direction. Just little tweaks like that, right? Just to make sure, nothing major. But one of the jump rings here on the on one side of my little infinity link, I'm gonna open that up and I'm gonna thread on my wrapped loop. And I'm gonna close that back. Now with the other jump ring on the other side, I'm gonna open it up very gently and I'm gonna attach it to that jump ring that is right in the middle of our beaded chain here. Close that back. Okay, so what we have, we lay this all out. Look how pretty. Now that's beautiful all by itself. You don't have to add anything extra to this if you don't want to. But you guys know that I'm extra <laughs> and I like to add extra. So I'm going to do two more dangles on either side of our focal here. And I'm going to use two more of those infinity links. So I've already got those ready. And we're going to do another little beaded section here with a little dangle. So I'm doing our little cluster that we've done several times over the past couple of weeks. It's just a three bead cluster with two jump rings. Super easy, but I'm also using um, some more of these beautiful flowers and the fire polish. So those are going to go right in there. Now I know that one looks like a mess at the moment, but we're going to put this one together first and then we'll put all of this together. So I'm going to cut another piece of the 22 gauge wire. You only need like two and a half, three inches. Okay. And we're going to do a wrapped loop. 
Again, you can substitute with a, an eye pin if you want to, totally up to you. But I'm gonna bend the wire. Coming in with my round nose pliers, up and over, rotate, take the wire over, and then wire wrap. Now there's one thing I do wanna mention. That is the placement of the loops here. So if you'll notice, my wraps loops are going in two different directions. The wrap loop on the bottom is facing away from me. The wrap loop on the top is facing towards me. That's because we're gonna use a jump ring here at the bottom and I need that jump ring to be facing me. So when you're putting this together, you, you definitely want to take note that those two wrap loops, at least on these two outer dangles, are going in two opposite directions. Okay, so when I go to make the next wrap loop, wrapped loop, I'm going to do it in a, in the different in the different direction. So I'm going to thread on my flower. Okay, and then I'm going to thread on my fire polish. And again, I want to do my wrapped loop facing towards me. So I want to be sure that the one that's down here is facing away from me. Okay, grab the wire. Again, just making sure that everything's going, everything's all going in the right direction. Okay, bend the wire. Coming in with the round nose pliers. Bend over, wire over. And then we're gonna wire wrap in that space. All right, now I need to double check to make sure everything's facing the right way. And I keep turning my beads because I like that, that AB finish to be on the front of mine. You, you can do yours however you want, but I love that facing the front. And if you need to, you can always twist a little bit with your pliers to get everything going the right way. Okay, trimming off the excess. Okay, all right. Now we're gonna do the little dangles on the bottom, which is just a little cluster with two jump rings and three of the little fire polish. Now this is where I didn't pre-cut my wire, or I didn't use pre-cut wire, I used head pins. And you can do your own knotted head pin here if you want to. I just found that the, the knotted head pin, the knot was a little big. So that's why I went with a, with a head pin instead. And I'm just going to do a simple loop. So I'm going to take a, a head pin, thread on my bead. And instead of doing a wraps loop, again, like I just said, simple loop. So I'm going to grab the wire and I'm going to bend it right where it is exiting the bead. So I'm not bending it over the top of the pliers. I'm coming with my cutter tool and trim off. You only need about a fourth of an inch of wire. And then we're gonna use our round nose pliers. Roll back to close up our loop. And you wanna be sure you get a good closure on that, okay? All right, now let's put this together. So we're just gonna take one jump ring And we're gonna thread on one drop. We're gonna close that back, okay? We're gonna open a second jump ring. Thread that on, and then we want a bead on either side so that this is nice and even, right? We want it to hang nice and balanced. So one bead on either side. We've got that jump ring in the middle and then before we close that, we're gonna attach that to our wrapped loop on the bottom of our little flower. Close that back. And then we're gonna attach these, cause you're gonna do two of those. We're gonna attach those to our infinity links here. So same thing like we did with our focal, kind of a mess here. <laughs> All right, open up the jump ring. We're gonna thread on the flower, close. This jump ring, we're going to open it very gently. Find the opening. 
and attach it to the jump ring, the next jump ring up from our center. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other one. And that's basically it. The only thing left to do is just to add some chain for the length. But quite honestly, there are enough beads in your bead box that you can bead up the rest of this if you wanted to. You don't have to use chain for the length. A lot of times I just do that um, to save beads, quite honestly. <laughs> but if you've got them, use them. You know what I mean? So I'm going to attach that to that jump ring right there. We're going to close that back. And I lay this all out. If it'll all lay correctly, it hangs better than it'll lay, that's for sure. But you've got your little infinity links on either side, your little clusters here, and your focal with your beautiful drop. So pretty. So last but not least is just my chain, right? And then I'll put all of this onto the bust so that you guys can see what it looks like finished. And then we're going to take a look at it versus the other necklace. Just as a quick little reminder of the versatility that is in each one of Sam's bead boxes. Because you can get so many different looks just from one box. It's really kind of amazing. And the amount of beads that you have, you could do tons more pieces you could have matching bracelets and earrings and you know you could do a whole set and still have leftovers all right so there you go now i know it looks like a mess just laying on the bead mat let's turn it around and put it on the bus shall we all right, guys. Now, don't forget that Sam's live sale tonight. That's at 5 p.m. Pacific time. That is 8 p.m. Eastern. And everybody in between, you're going to have to figure that one out on your own because I don't do numbers very well. <laughs> I'm terrible with the time zones. I apologize. All right. So once you've got it all together... That's how it's going to hang. So, so pretty. And you can make some little matching, some matching, whoa, you can make some matching earrings to go with this, some little infinity links. Hold on, you guys. Just drop it. I've dropped all kinds of things today. It's been one of those days. I'm trying to get this to hang correctly. Just a second. All right, there we go. Okay. <laughs> It's still crooked. My goodness. There we go. But you can make some really cool little infinity links, right? For the earrings, there were there are more of the flowers. So you literally could make matching earrings to go with this. If you, purple is not your thing, you could use the blue. Remember, in Sam's box for this month, there was there were two of the drops. So you could do this in the blue as well right? Which would give this a whole different look. Just, I, I don't, it, I don't know. You could do the exact same necklace just in the blue and it would give it a totally, totally different feeling. I, I personally think that if I did the blue, I would go with silver instead of gold. That would give it a completely different look too. So yeah, you've got lots of options. So you can see I got this necklace out of that box and then this necklace which is completely different i just messed up the chain on this because i don't know it feels like a monday <laughs> i'm telling you this one that i just undid the chain right two completely different looks from the same box and then i have all of this left over right which i could like i mentioned make more necklaces i could do one in blue I could do bracelets, earrings. I've got a ton of these left over. So when you look at Sam's box that way, I think you really see, 
you know, what is possible. I don't know about you guys, but I very rarely use every single bead. Like I get to the end of the month, I know that the new box is coming and I still have beads left over. And I think that's just really a, a testament to the value of, of the monthly box from Sam's Bead Shop. Uh, if you're not signed up for it, definitely want to check that out and use my coupon code Sarah for $5 off your first box. Don't forget that Sam's sale is going on this evening. You don't want to miss that. Um, and anything else? Am I forgetting something? I don't think so. I can't, I, I really don't think, I don't know. It's, it throws me off when, when we're under an hour and then I'm like, well, what do I say now? <laughs> Because I did not expect that that necklace to go by so quickly. I have this leftover time and I'm not sure what to do with it. So um, I guess I'm just going to let you guys go. But again, just a reminder to go check out Sam's Bead Shop. All of the goodies there. The best way to get your information about Sam's Bead Box and the live sales and all of the fun things going on is to download the app. That is a great way to get all of your notifications. You don't have to rely on Facebook, which lots of people have been fighting with today. So uh, definitely want to check out the app. It's a great way to, again, stay up to date with all of the things and to shop very conveniently from your phone. Uh, definitely want to sign up because you don't want to miss out on next month's speed box. It's stunning. Not that this one wasn't, but oh man, you're, you're in for a treat. You're in for a treat with the June box. I, I can't wait for you guys to see it. So that is it for me, you guys. Uh, Jennifer, <laughs> Jennifer's not letting up. She said, we won't tell anybody. I promise. Just give us a, <laughs> and she says, show us the June box. Just saying, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. You're going to love it though. I promise you're going to love it. it. There's so much color. It's just gorgeous. I'm, I'm so excited. Um, yeah. Hardwired is getting together at 4 PM today. Where's our project for hardwired? Just in case you guys are curious what it is that we do over on hardwired. We're putting together this wire woven pendant. And uh, yeah, so that's what we do over in the hardwired group. We'll be meeting. And then you guys, I will be back with you on Friday at 1 p.m. Eastern for our Feel Good Friday show. And then again at 4 p.m. for Master Maker. So uh, you guys, you're just getting started with me this week. I'll see you. See you some more. Right. All right, everybody. You have an amazing rest of your afternoon. And I will see you guys again soon. Love you guys. Bye.